My name is Elizabeth Alfano, your host of The Dinner Party. When celebs can't make the filming of my live TV roundtable talk show, I take the dinner party to them. Hydrating in style over Voss water and with the help of my friends at Stove Cookware. Here's a recent episode of The Dinner Party at the Sunset Marquee in Los Angeles with actor Michael Madsen and filmmaker and his mother, Elaine Madsen. Preparing for today, I went over so many interviews with you. And in every interview, inevitably, somebody asks you, are you really this tough guy? And in every interview, you answer the same way. You say, oh no, I'm a romantic. I'm a poet. And then you say, but I also yeah. really want to drive you. And <laughs> poof is in the poet. pudding. He's a poet. But then you say, but I also really just want to drive cars, and I really wanted to be a race car driver, and you know, life is tricky, and you know, sometimes it can get kind of raucous. And so I thought, what better way to decide if you actually are a badass or not, as you claim to be on your hot sauce, is by asking your mother. So I wanted you to tell us. <laughs> she's gonna not. She's gonna say. You know, yeah, he says you're gonna choir bore me up, mom. I was an Eagle Scout. And <laughs> yes, he was an Eagle he Scout. Was, okay. But and well, she didn't realize I was stealing cars. <laughs> While you were an Eagle you know. Scout. Yeah. That's well, not true. Well, I guess shortly after that. Yeah. <laughs> you were only in high school then. You hadn't you hadn't fallen into your bad boy ways yet. Well, you had no idea what I was up to, mom. Uh, no, but, uh, but unfortunately, uh, right over yet. time, I hear about it, and it's like, oh, did I really need to know this? <laughs> so we are. But there. we well, are going to go with But while he, but while he was earning his Eagle Scout, he hit the group of people he chose to help was um, Salvation Army. Salvation Army. Nice. And so one of the things that he had to do was stand in front of the local theater in Evanston, Illinois, ringing a bell and collecting money. Now, you can imagine how his friends might have responded to that. <laughs> well, he they was... wanted me to help them steal the pot of money. <laughs> well, They wanted me to be like, a, a, figure out a way to rip it off. Right, but you didn't, <laughs> you know. He, you, he did fulfill all of the... All of the things, but Michael did not look like your typical Boy Scout. He had long hair and dripped jeans, and the only thing I ever asked him was, well, on Sunday, you know, look nice and go with me to church, but you can do whatever you like. And Everybody. did you go to church? Yeah. 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 For a while. Began, None of us do now. Yeah, we I, did, did I didn't hear much no, passion I, I in that. I got really disillusioned after a while. Yeah, yes. so so did his mother. Well, I believe in God. I have a really strong faith in, in God. I just, organized religion is, is um, yeah, it's a little divisive, you know. It's kind of... It's, it's kind a of, business, you know, too. Yeah, it's a bit ludicrous, you know. In, in his new book, there's pictures of us in London. And I've been around been the whole France world, and, and I never would have imagined an uh, auto mechanic from Chicago would be able to get around the world like I have, but you know, I mean, thank God. Yes, get right. out of LA, right? We have a picture on Facebook the of him. The cesspool of the world. Yeah, he's shaking hands with Putin who wanted to meet him. Oh, no, I didn't, did. I met him, I, I met uh, I met the president of Serbia, I met the... Uh, um, I love Serbia. I, every time I go to another country, I end up meeting the leaders for some reason. They want to meet actors. I don't know why, I don't think we're as fascinating as everyone thinks, but uh, I've been able to see places and go places. When you're making a movie in another country, you're in a bubble though, you know what I mean? You're really protected from what anybody in another profession would experience going there, you know? So I know that, and I know that you're surrounded by good circumstance and you're protected, so to speak. But you, you have a comfort level that lets you experience it. You don't have to be paranoid or afraid of politics. You know, you're, you're, for some reason, actors, you know, are looked upon as an artist in a way, and so they don't have to be overwhelmed by politics. But you're meeting a lot of politicians, which I think is interesting. Yeah, right. I, I just listen, and I, I kind of, you know, I, I, uh, I try not to take a, a position. I, I'm not really one of those people who think that actors should be deciding important thing. Because I was know. just about to ask you who you're going to vote for. Well, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> no. I, uh, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do that because it, it's, it, it turns the whole conversation into another direction of, right. of, of conversation. That you know, and, and that, that's one thing about being 
what what Michael does is and and Virginia does is that you have to have boundaries about your personal life even though you know TMZ seems to think everything needs to be out there you know the thing is there has to be some things because just because you are recognizable and it's viewed as if you have a bully pulpit and what you say can be appropriated you can wind up being I mean the way things are today you could wind up being in, in somebody's commercial you had no I no idea, no idea that that it they context do it. it's like yeah. when you do an interview for a magazine you know you're just having a rambling conversation and then when they finally print it up they will have taken one sentence out of one thing Michael you said. meets the Pope <laughs> yeah and, and, and they, they misrepresent what you what you actually said yeah. or you, you said you know man I really like uh, this iced tea is really great yeah. and in the magazine there'll be an exclamation point after it as if I shouted it you know yeah. this iced tea is incredible Talk to me about the trickiness of when you've done 170 movies, if I counted right, give or take. That's about yeah, And I think close, in yeah. 2016 alone, I think <laughs> you're meant to have 11 come if, out. If you believe the IMDb. Okay. Well, I, a, I, that's yeah. a trap door, you know. Okay. Like, I went to Wikipedia, which is maybe worse. I don't know. But I think in 2015, you it was either 11 or 15 that came out. Well, I, I think maybe four is probably a better number okay. in reality. I mean, the thing is that you know, if you get on an elevator with somebody and they say, oh, you know, my brother-in-law wrote a script. And you go, really? And they go, yeah, you know, uh, would you like to read it? And you go, uh, yeah, sure, I'd like to read it. You know, because, you know, everyone told me not to do Reservoir Dogs right. because it was a yes. first-time director and it's nobody was in it. And they weren't paying anybody anything. Everybody was getting scale, you know. Until Harvey Keitel came on board, nobody really gave a shit about it. And everybody told me not to do it. But if I hadn't done it, I mean, how dumb would I be? Because, you know, it was a masterpiece and of writing and filmmaking. And uh, that's where I met, you know, Harvey Keitel, became godfather to my son. And, you know, so when I, when I meet somebody... And as well, right? Isn't he also When I meet that? somebody who's, as a project, I, 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 I hesitate to blow them off. Because you never know when you're going to run into the next uh, 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 great filmmaker. In that way, I would think maybe it's enjoyable to work with someone like Quentin Tarantino again and again. Because you know what you're getting. You know it's solid. Yeah. You know you're trusting him. You've got that personal relationship as well as that professional relationship. Oh, he's the greatest. He's, uh, I mean, I've done four with him now. And uh, <laughs> he kind of, he, get, he, get, he understands me. Like he knows what I'm gonna do before I do it, and he's he's very. Um, um, I know he's gonna kill me for saying this, but I'm real. I'm, I'm and I don't care because it's. I'm sorry, but Quentin, you know what? Uh, I I think I'm the only actor living who's ever been able to get away with saying things and doing things that were not in the script. I read this about you. And. And he gets so mad when I say it, or tell people. Even Sam Jackson got mad at me uh, at a press conference about Hateful Eight because he said, man, Michael, you're not supposed to tell anybody. You're not supposed, <laughs> to, say, you're not supposed to say anything. And I said, oh, well, you know, I've already said it. So I'm already on the record <laughs> as done it. But I always thought it was a compliment to him. And I always thought that he was complimenting me by letting me get away with it until I realized he was getting all the credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about going off subject there. The deep end already. Yeah. Well, speaking of your mother, do you ever go to her for advice on a script? Or do you ever um, say, like, read this, because I'm not sure? I think she's a great writer. I think she's a great poet. And I think that she, you know, I mean, I had a father who was a blue collar fireman. Right. Who was, you know, pretty stubborn, pretty, you know, bull of a man. And there's my mom, who's this gentle, intellectual, artistic individual. So I had these two great superpowers who created me. Mm. And I'm stuck in the middle somewhere, you know, like a freak of nature. That's me with my mom as a little boy. And then later in life, I'm sh killing people in Donnie Brasco. So Which was a great movie. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird baby on the left image, right? Yes. Like, that's where it started, and that's what happened. 
she's told me so many things that have stuck with me that you know that uh, I try to be uh, faithful to. I mean, if it hadn't been for her, I, I probably would have. I mean, listen, being a police officer or being a fire fireman or being a electrician or, or a bricklayer, uh, those are all very noble professions, and, and I would have functioned well in them. And that's basically where I was headed, you know. But she kind of, you know, it's like the Robert Frost poem of the, the, the crossroads and the path less, tra the road less traveled or the path less traveled. And, you know, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have made that left turn, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, Probably wouldn't have pursued an acting career because yeah, I he wrote a that poem about that exact thing. I probably did, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, he did. Yes, I have it framed on my office wall. Do you still uh, like it? Um, you know, I, I've I've really I've kind of been to the top of the mountain, you know, with movies that made a lot of money and were very popular, and I've been down into the gutter with some of the worst crap that's ever been produced. And I've been in the middle too, and so I, I've I've been greatly inspired and really lucky and fortunate in a lot of pictures I made that I didn't even appreciate at the time they came out. But because I've been at the other end of it, um, I learned from that too, and and I, I I rediscovered from doing Hateful Eight, I, I rediscovered what it was that I was passionate about. It, it brought me back to the reality of appreciating what I do. Um, I spent a lot of time making a lot of pictures I shouldn't have made because I was starting to put groceries in the refrigerator. Sure. Yeah, we I call them, got to pay the mortgage movie. Sure. Yeah, you know, Dad, why are you, why are you doing this movie? Well, because I have to pay the bills. <laughs> and people don't realize that. You know, most people think, oh, you know, they see a movie and they go, why is he in that fucking thing? Oops, sorry. No, and, no, and, go right and, ahead and, and swear. And, and and they don't realize I did it because I needed to buy salami and eggs and milk and dog food and cat food. And <laughs> it's a job in the end. Yeah, in the right. end, it's a, it's a job. It's no yeah. different from any other job, mm -hmm. really. You can, I'm not always going to be in a Tarantino film. You know, I'm not always going to be in a, in, a, in a studio picture. And there's a lot of unforgivingness in the industry. Man, wow, you know, the, Studios really look down upon you if you've done a couple of B movies. They think you're it's over. But I I realized that it's a big cycle, and it's like you know you're only as good as the last thing you did, and you know all of a sudden if you're in a successful movie, all the crappy ones you did are being re-released. Right. So how convenient. You know, yeah. 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 And, and 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 they suddenly become even things that you did that weren't so good. Are suddenly reevaluated. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, you know, maybe it wasn't so bad, and this and that. And uh, I, I'm in a good place now because I, I didn't, uh, I, uh, I never quite understood the whole thing of it. I thought it was uh, an accident. How you fell into acting, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was an accident because. You studied with Malkovich, didn't you? Well, I mean, that story's kind of overblown. I mean, I, I, that's why I would like to be on this with you and why I like these kind of opportunities because you can set the record straight. Good, go ahead. You know, I went to see John in a play called Bison Men at Steppenwolf Theater, and they were a basement theater company. Nobody at that knew point. them from mm -hmm. anything, right? But I had I was a big movie fan of Humphrey Bogart and, and Robert Mitchum and some of these people and I'd never seen live theater. I'd never seen actors right in front of my face, you know, mm -hmm. as far away as these cameras are. And being physically there to see him do it, it was really kind of like, wow. I mean I I appreciated it quite a bit. John was playing Lenny, Gary Sinise was uh, George, I mean, yeah. And so uh I, I, I signed up to do scene study classes with Steppenwolf. And we did one production of Mice and Men. Okay. Unfortunately, I played Carlson, the guy who kills the dog. <laughs> the unloved you know, character. Yeah, yes. and we did one, you know, a run of for about a month of that. But that was it. I mean, I got bored really fast, and I left. And uh, you know, I, I figured if I'm gonna do this for a living, I ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen if I stay here and study, you know. Uh, I need to go to New York or California and, you know, get serious about it. But I'll, 
the dog in that play was the best acting teacher I ever had. And it was much better teacher than John. <laughs> or Gary, by the way, who mysteriously never liked me. But uh, yeah, Gary. Over the years, what's the biggest thing you've learned that you go back to to remind yourself? Hindsight is a really tricky thing, you know. Life Every, is tricky. Yeah, I mean, everything, you can always come to some grand conclusion about what you should have done or what you could have done differently. But you're only realizing that in hindsight. Sure. Because at the time, it seemed like the most rational thing in the world. And so I, I wasted a lot of time like that, worrying about that. Like, I wish I could have did this, I should have did this, should have did that. But I, don't, I stopped doing that because, you know, Every single thing I ever did, I wanted to do exactly that, but I did it. For me, the only thing you can count on is change. Mm -hmm. Do not believe that anything is going to last, but live, act, work as if it is, so that you're fresh and giving while it's happening. And, you know, when you get to those places where you're you know, you're on your knees pounding on a door that won't open. It's like, oh, okay, there's another door over there. Or if you're on the other side of the door pounding on it and you can't get out, there's a window. You know, you have to not stay stuck. Mm -hmm. You have to move yourself. What yeah. about you, Michael? Um, uh, I learn, you know, new things every single day. Just when I think I got it all figured out, I realize that I don't know, fuck all. I think it's about, you know, not forgetting your past, but realizing how lucky we are to be in the position that we're in and, and uh, appreciating it. I mean, uh, if I, I, I gave my sons a life that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. But in the doing of that, you know, there was sacrifice to be made. Sure. And there's things about life that they don't know that they're never gonna know, that I know about, because uh, things were not like that for me. And so it's confusing, really, you know? Do you give everybody everything, or are you the guy who says, no, you can't have nothing? I, I don't wanna jump a giant fence, but, you know, two of Bing Crosby's sons, you know, shot themselves, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I've known and had friendships with sons of some pretty well-known actors and you know they're miserable and they didn't know what to do with themselves to a certain degree and I just so fearful of my sons ever feeling that way um, I being a parent's been the hardest thing in the world for me it's been a lot more uh, hard to figure out than being a movie actor I call her and ask her advice about what to do with my kids I'm sure you do even at this point in my life, that I'm still calling her. That makes a lot of her. sense. I call her to ask her how to spell stuff. <laughs> I call her to ask her questions about history or anything like that. And I swear to God, she's never not known the answer. <laughs> you are See, lucky. Mom, what year did, was Caesar killed by Brute? She knows. <laughs> so, Mom, uh, where did the pyramids really come from? She knows. Mom, how do you spell, uh, you know, uh, our, uh, she knows. I mean, it's really bizarre. She's self-taught. She's read, I don't know how many books you've read, but she's like a walking oh, library walk of yeah. humanity and history. It's anytime I don't know something, I go, well, I'm going to call my mom. One of my, Jack, one of my grandsons calls me Google. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma Google? Yeah, Grandma Google. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Yeah. So do you oh, have yeah. any words of advice for your children, Michael? Do I? Oh my God. <laughs> you know, if I thought they would listen, I, I would. Right, I mean, okay. It's, that's the dilemma of being a parent is that, you know, you get this wealth of knowledge and you can't pass it on because they don't want to hear it. Because mm. they think they know better. Mm. And great, good. You know, if they think they know better, let them try. But it gets to the point where they're like, yeah, dad, sure, dad. Yeah, just get over there, dad. You, Move over because you know, but they'll come you know, full circle and then you know, 15 years down the road, that, but, they'll come you know, back. You know, so down. far, my 25 year old is the closest to coming back, mm. and he hasn't, so well. you know. 
Well, uh, you know what the thing I, I think the the hardest thing about being as a par being a parent is just at the point when you feel like you're getting really good at it, they don't need you anymore. <laughs> and and yeah. but the truth is, as a parent, your job is to do yourself out of the job. Right. Th yes. That they don't need you, you anymore. That's your success. This is a poem I wrote about Michael. Michael is magic hours, purple night blue. He's a silver-edged feather flight, sun-green festoon. He's a luminous lark with a scarlet streak brow that's sewn with a star from the Pleiades bow where it's growing new stars for their Michael to throw. Wonderful. How old was Michael when you wrote that? Oh. She just wrote that yesterday. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay. Would you like to show your softer side and read some poetry? I don't know how soft it's going to come out, but uh, well, yeah, I found it. Yeah, it's called Mama. She said, uh, I don't know, "What year was that?" Wow. There's a wall in Battery Park, the Vietnam Memorial, with words emblazoned in glass blocks written by soldiers, letters written home, words from young men who died in battle. One stood out for me. It says, Dear Mother, I am cursed. I'm a soldier in a time when war is not in fashion. This made me think of my own mother. She wrote to me as a child, not with words, but with deeds that said, Dear Son, I am cursed. I'm a soldier when soldiers are not in fashion. She gave up everything to give her children choices. Choices that turned out to be blessed and blessed by God. She was, is, and always will be remembered by me as the few and the brave. And to quote Robert Frost, it made all the difference. I'm gonna say cheers to your mother. Cheers to Elaine, that was wonderful. You do have a soft side. Your mother is a poet, mm -hmm. a playwright, editor-in-chief of a magazine, yeah. and she's a director, Emmy Award-winning movie director, and you've recently directed and starred in and produced another film right. called I Know a Woman Like This. Now, the majority of things that I've just said are in your 80s and 70s. Well, 70s and 80s, right. Yes. Yeah, the first so, film that I won an Emmy for I was in my 50s. This documentary is about, a, it's an attitude about being at a time of your life when society tells you just like, oh God, go away, and sit in your rocking chair. Well, I have 17 women on film who all have incredible attitude of like, that's just a lot of bullshit. and. You know, we have um, e you got Rita Moreno. You got yeah, we got Kit. Rita Moreno oh God, and Eartha Kitt. Lauren Hutton. Lauren Hutton is yeah. so funny. And in this documentary, we actually talk about the lively sex activities, uh, <laughs> sex lives that we have. You know, it doesn't stop. It doesn't go away because of the calendar. Hey, Mommy, can we talk about something else? <laughs> It's been really, really satisfying. It took us a really long time, but we do now have a, uh, a distributor, Virgil Films. It's going to be released around Mother's Day. and Across uh, the country? You didn't, you didn't tell me Across that. country, right. Well, well you're, you're in mom. China and you're in Italy. I mean, I haven't. No, oh, mom, that's We're just crazy. catching up this week, you know. See, so we have to be on a show together to find, to, to out, find out. Yeah, so we have, <laughs> but I, but we have now a distributor. It'll be released in May and all kinds of uh, around Mother's Day and all on all digital platforms. And it's very, very satisfying to be able to do what I love doing: tell stories. Old is not a four-letter word. I have a lot of energy. I'm you really do, yeah. very, I'm blessed uh, to have that energy. But I also, I mean, it helps that my daughter ha is the producer. You know, do you think if I just went down the street in Sunset Boulevard, I could find a distributor? Or yeah, I could no. find Knowing a producer? Knowing your mom, I wouldn't be surprised, okay? <laughs> but I didn't have to. 
Every you know, Virginia you, Virginia here. believed in me, and Michael capsule. believes in me. Where are you hiding the time machine? It's way? true. <laughs> you're not aging. Your energy, and it just you're not aging. Right. Well, it, it, life... Give me the key to that thing. <laughs> I think you're doing pretty good. You uh, look pretty good. And you just took on a new full-time job yeah, as editor-in-chief of a magazine. And the, the, th the exciting thing is, this is an online magazine. Actually, Michael was on the cover of the last print issue. And I was just a writer at that time. But over time, the publisher and I had a meeting of the minds, and I have some things that she was excited about that we could change it. So it's pretty exciting to me to have a brand new enterprise. I'm going to be 84 in, uh, in, in May. Now, did you cook at, when you were, because you, you were a single mom, basically. Oh, my God. Did I you? had more... I had the biggest uh, casserole <gasps> recipe book because in the morning, I would before I would go to work and they would go to school, I would make three meals before w I had coffee. You were such a doer. Uh, yeah, you? I've always been, absolutely been a doer. And we had a lot of tuna casserole <laughs> and, and a, lot of, a lot of hot dogs and beans and <laughs> a lot of popcorn and grape juice, yeah. I have gift bags for both of you guys oh from, my of gosh. course, the lovely sponsors who made this all possible. Well, thank Voss you so Water, much. Sunset Marquis, Stove Cookware. Thanks to them, and thanks for you guys for dishing with me today. It's a oh great pleasure. Oh my gosh, this was this was just lovely. Thank you. So and I much. could have been in the south of France. <laughs> oh, this is so much better. <laughs> so much better. My son, you know, he's he goes, um, Dad, why did you have to get killed? Y50. And I'm like, well, you know, that's what happens when you're a guest star. You get killed by the leading <laughs> man, you know? You know, I get asked the same questions a lot. And so sure. I try to be inventive with my answer. And I'm sitting there, and one of them goes, uh, so, Michael, you know, what have you been doing while you're in Italy? And I said, oh, well, you know, um, I actually got to meet the Pope, which I obviously had not been able to do that, but I just made it up, and I said, oh, I met the Pope. I wanted you know? to be creative. And then, yeah, and everybody was like, oh, my, you know, they, I realized that they believed me, they, you know? Yes. And so I was like, yeah. And one of them goes, well, what, what did he say? What, what, did he, what did the Pope say? And I go, well, um, he asked me what it was like to work with Quentin. <laughs> <laughs> you know?